specificity builds credibility. And look at all the other words that we really don't need. And I have found that some of these habits, these empty words that are fillers, don't come with one client, they come with many. And actually and basically are now prevalent in conversation. They are unnecessary words. And the reason you take out every word that has no value is the ones that are left are going to be more memorable. So I'll say to my clients, did you do it or did you actually do it? Did you do it? Did you basically do it? No, you did it. Remove the unnecessary words. Now, this might be more common when we go to some parts of the country and certainly in the world of technology, but you do not call your prospects you guys. Now, you probably call each other you guys. What you'll take to a formal or more stressful conversation is what you do every day. So I suggest you stop addressing each other as you guys. <laughs> yeah, well, I would say you. Thank you for the opportunity, not thank you guys for the opportunity, especially if you are young. Now, admittedly, being British, we are more formal. However, in many cases, it will, especially with a younger salesperson, it will be perceived as disrespectful if you say you guys. And when in doubt, be conservative, is my rule. When in doubt, be conservative. Be a tad more formal than informal especially at the beginning of a relationship, till you gauge how formal or in the, informal are they comfortable being. Right. Anytime you say right at the end of a sentence, your intention is you want to connect to your audience. This is a great product, right? You're looking to improve your business systems, right? One, that is irritating. You are, st it is, yeah, it is irritating. Two, what you are doing is looking for permission. Now, for example, when you have a speaker at the Prosperity Seers, you listen to Don, you listen to one of your guest speakers, you want to know you have total confidence that what they say is true. When you listen to your sales manager or the president or your boss, you want to know with full confidence what they said is, you can take it to the bank, it's accurate. If you keep saying right at the end of a sentence, it's almost as if, I'm not quite sure, do you agree? I need your agreement. Plus, you're stepping on your impact phrase. Now, this is an idea that comes from the world of comedy. There is a set-up phrase and a punch word or punch phrase, that's what triggers the laugh. Take my wife, please. If you make any comment or add any words after the punch word or phrase, you kill the laugh. In business communications, think of it this way, there is a setup phrase and an impact phrase. What comes at the end of the sentence is most important. This is not necessarily how your English teacher taught you to write, but it is the way to speak to be remembered and repeated and speak to your audience of your audience, to have your key ideas remembered weeks after the conversation and to sound clear, 
concise, and credible. So one, take a sentence from your presentations, especially the important presentations, the important lines in your presentation. You're going to edit out every word that isn't needed, actually, basically, and you are going to make sure any unit of time, now a unit of time is last year, in the first quarter, in this seminar, in our conversation, and the most overused impact diluting word in business communications today. Thank you for the opportunity to update you today. One, today is 24 hours, and you probably have 20 minutes. And this is an intelligent audience. They know it's today. So you don't need that word. So let's just say, if you want to communicate how long you might have, let's just say you're delivering a more formal sales presentation, whether you're standing up, sitting down, You've gone through your presentation, and you want to acknowledge how long you have. Now, you've already started speaking. Congratulations. Thank you for the opportunity. Fred and John and Susie have been very helpful with their information, and they tell us you want this. In the next 27 minutes, just as my friend at the Fairmont said, in the next eight minutes, it is, I am acknowledging the time frame you've given me. But it's at the beginning of the sentence, because what is most important is what they're going to learn at the end of the sentence, the impact phrase. In the next 27 minutes, you will learn four principles how your presentations will be more impactful not, you will learn how your presentations will be more impactful in the next 27 minutes. No, that isn't what's important. What comes before, so look at your conversations and follow this formula when necessary. When was it? Where was it? Who is in the story and what happened? And that is a formula you will use with your stories. When was it? Three years ago, John Smith called and said. Because then at the end, help. Now, you don't need all these. You don't necessarily need any, every ingredient. But always remember, when was it, where was it, is putting what follows in context. So it's a setup phrase, it isn't an impact phrase. Right is a killer of your impact phrase, as well as looking at as if you need, per, you need agreement and you're irritating. Out there, what do you mean by out there in the world? I mean in the business community. Do you need it? Bunches. Bunches are for grapes. Or cherries. Look at how often in your everyday life you have bunches of ideas or bunches of leads. Remember, it's not appropriate for your business conversation. You will not improve what you're not aware of in your sales meetings when you practice your presentations, record them, and listen to them. And then if you really have an important presentation that might be worth your biggest sale ever, record it, have it transcribed, and read what came out of your mouth. You will be horrified. Today, as you mentioned, impact diluting. If you need the unit of time, be specific. Kind of and sort of. Again, kind of and sort of dilutes what you're saying and does not make you look, look credible. I was coaching a banker, very prestigious background, and I said, knowing the answer, how well educated are you? 
He had more degrees than a thermometer. I said, why are you such a sloppy speaker? And then he said, the people who report to me, we were all in training together. So I said, you're trying to be one of the guys, but you're not one of the guys. You need to speak in a way that shows all the others, if you want to elevate your career and be in this position, this is how you speak. You don't go down to their level, you raise them up. I was coaching a technology team, salespeople and the technical staff, about being precise. And they, they said, but Patricia, our customers speak this way. <coughs> and again, a brand new fripicism fell flawlessly from my lips. I said, there are better ways to emotionally connect with your prospects than modeling their bad behavior and sloppy language. If you are the best in your industry, and you always find it is the best in an industry that invests their time in, in, a t in learning new ideas, or at least getting confirmation of what they're already doing. So if you're here, the chances are you're at the head of your game. Still not a bad idea, novice or seasoned, to revisit what you are doing and saying. But model that you are the best in your industry just by the way you communicate, no matter what they are doing. All learning requires repetition and reinforcement.